Last week we were scurrying up for Hurricane Matthew. It ended up veering a degree away from us and all we had were slightly strong winds. No one got hurt, nothing got broke. Not the same can be said about other parts of Florida, North Carolina, Cuba, and Haiti. The destruction this hurricane brought in human lives, homes, and basic infrastructure was horrific. Thinking about it makes me feel blessed and lucky that I, my loved ones, and my engineless boat were spared. We're gonna try to help those in need with what we can, while looking ahead to get this boat ready and out of here ASAP. In this episode, I'm gonna share some of the experience I gained while searching for a boat and formally introduce Infinito's first mate. Besides knowing how to tell a generator from an alternator, the most important step in living on a sailboat is choosing the boat you're gonna live on. I prepared a bunch of information with links and book recommendations and blogs and all kinds of stuff and I'm putting it on, on the website. So feel free to go there and check it out. Um, it's invaluable information that helped me in my boat search and it should help you out as well. You're welcome. Just for the record, I'm not getting any money from the authors of the sources that I'm recommending. I wish I was. As with everything else in life, when searching for the ideal boat, the first thing you should do is define what you want. Ask yourself the hard questions. Define what the perfect boat would be for you. Are you concerned about speed? Do you like, you know, racing and regattas and that kind of stuff? What's your take on comfort? Do you need standing headroom or can you live without? Can you live without hot showers, for example? That's a costly consideration to make. Do you want to go around the world or you just want to chill in the Bahamas? Do you want to live aboard and bring all your stuff and your family to the boat or you just want to take it out on the weekends? All of these are going to make a difference in the boat you're going to pick. And remember, everything in boating is a compromise. I asked myself these questions and some of the things I came up with were I want to keep things simple and cheap. So not a lot of screens and electronics, no dishwasher. Um, I have an alright threshold for comfort so I don't need a hot shower for example. Speed is also not an issue for me because I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere. If you're in a hurry to get anywhere, I guess sailboats are not for you. <laughs> um, on the contrary, I'd rather have a, a heavier, sturdier hull that will keep me safe in storms, for example. So based on these requirements, it turned out that, whoa, it turned out that the best boat for me would be something built in the 70s or early 80s, the golden days of fiberglass where boats were still built really thick and heavy. And there's a bunch of these boats out here in the market nowadays going for much cheaper than a similar new boat would be. The boats that I ended up looking at in this journey were boats like the Cape Dory or the Baba. Um, and lastly, the Valiant, which are all built in the 70s. Amazing boats, but, uh, and many of them are going around today in great condition. Not this one though. But once you've narrowed down the boats that you want to look for and you find them either on Craigslist or whatever, make sure you do not buy the boat until you have it professionally surveyed. I'll say that again. Make sure you get the boat surveyed by a professional before you buy it. Unless you're a professional surveyor yourself. A professional surveyor has already saved me from buying a boat that looked beautiful on the outside but its core was rotten, like some people. Oh, but a survey is expensive. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's expensive, but it's not as expensive as buying the wrong boat first. And second, you can be creative. For example, I um, that same guy that saved me on one boat gave me an extra free survey um, because I offered to clean his roof for him. So there you go. Work around the system. So to recap, do some reading and inform yourself a little bit before starting to search for a boat with the information I provided on the website. Narrow down your boat choices by asking yourself some questions and finding out exactly what you want and make sure to get your boat surveyed before you make the purchase. And while we're on the topic of searching, I just want to 
point how bizarre and funny it is that when I'm not actively searching for something, this is usually when I find it. I guess this boat is an example. I was already set on something else and then someone just texted me about someone giving away a free boat. Likewise, I was also very much into my own I'm gonna travel the world alone on a sailboat thing when I met Anna behind a car wash counter. I had a ticket for her get a free car wash within 15 days of getting your oil change kind of thing. And I went there on the last day and she called me out on it. It turns out this girl was a super musician from Venezuela, working on a political asylum visa after having basically become a target of her own government for using music to try to raise social awareness in her country. Long story short, it's been a year and she's helped me She's been the biggest help on every single one of the projects and she's working on this boat with me and I don't know, I can't imagine leaving this dock without her now. Um, such is life, I guess. So if you can take a lesson from all of this is that if you're searching for something and you can't find it, then maybe stop looking so hard and that thing may just find you one day when you're least expecting it happened to me twice so we'll talk next week see ya thanks for watching if you like what you just saw please give us a like on facebook and subscribe to our youtube channel and if you're feeling generous feel free to support us on patreon